Hey coaches, welcome back. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Hey, today I've got a video podcast on coaching versus talent and what wins. I, I was looking back through my blog posts and came back over an article, I don't know, from 2013 maybe where somebody said something. So I thought, uh, I would address this on my current take on it. And, uh, so yeah, so let's jump right into coaching versus uh, talent and where we think we're at. If you get a chance, please subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. Uh, so let's see, let's see coaching versus talent. This is definitely an old argument. It's like the chicken or the egg, which came first. Um, potato, tomato kind of thing. Uh, it, it's really, you know, a pretty good argument and, and one to debate. It's fun to think about. I know this really came from a Caesar quote that I saw, I think over at Dumb Coach Forum, that uh, he was telling some coach, don't waste too much time on recruiting. You don't know what you don't know about coaching youth football. Coaching is really how to win in youth football. And so I thought about that. I really don't agree with that too much, uh, especially cause I'm here in Texas. So, you know, other states that may not be football centric, uh, maybe that, that works. Uh, but I, I do follow uh, <coughs> Bear Bryant here and read his couple of his books. And he talks about, you must have the, the hosses, which are the studs. That, you know, no matter what you do, everything equal, you really got to have talent to compete. And I'm, I kind of lean toward that, but we're going to talk about more because my answer is a little bit more involved. What do you guys think? We'd love to know. Leave me some comments. Shoot me an email. You know, is your answer coaching or is it talent? What do you think? It's kind of both. Maybe. I don't know. I know so many times <laughs> when I coach youth football, I really want it just to be me and my coaching, my ego. You know, I was, I really got this team going, these players, this, this was my coaching coach Witt and I's coaching. This was us. We, we really did it, but you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. I take a look back at it. I've coached, you know, 30 plus tackle seasons and look back and was it me or did we have some really good players? Did we develop those players? So kind of look at that. Uh, I know that I know that I've been really good uh, at uh, evaluating talent. Even when I started in '94, I'd never coached youth football before. I'd coached adult flag and flag and intramurals at Texas A&M, and had several pretty good teams there, but never coached youth football. And of course, I played for ten years uh, through Pee Wee in high school, but. Uh, I don't know. I have a knack for evaluating and drafting and figuring out players and where they go on teams. So I know that I'm really good at identifying that and how that works. Um, I do know when we've won Super Bowls and like championship playoff games to get into Super Bowls, we did have studs, uh, especially at tailback. We had speed. Um, we had, we were, went undefeated one season uh, we lost our, our speed tailback the third game. We were still able to go undefeated through the season, but when we got to the Super Bowl, you know, we had lost that speed. We were basically running like four fullbacks, um, and we lost that Super Bowl, I think, by 10 points. And that's where it caught up to us. So to, to win, you know, if you're trying to win these bigger games, because you can be competitive without, you know, with average talent if you're a good coach. But trying to win big games, that's really, I think, talent's going to happen. I think the other thing uh, with coaches uh, versus talent is some folks forget this teamwork, the esprit de corps. We've lost a big game several years ago to a team that had been together. We had just kind of put a new team together. Um, and that teamwork they had and how they worked together and flowed uh, really work there. So you've, you've also kind of got that. So, um, and my take is if you've got three to six studs on a youth football team, you can really dominate a league. And at younger ages, you just might need two. 
maybe one if they're really good, like top tier, because speed and youth football kills. Usually the fastest team will win in youth football because they can sweep. So that's how that goes, especially if you're running back, tailback, quarterback is really good. And then if you've got all these other positions here, wide receiver, fullback, linebackers, DNs, and some big offense, defense tackles, if you've got that worked out and they're studly and stacked, uh, you can be an average coach. Uh, you don't really have to do too much. That talent is going to get you there. And I think really, I think you see in the NFL, you know, if you've got Tom Brady and Gronkowski and a good running back and everything else is kind of equal, they, they can kind of take over the game. So that so you kind of see where I'm leaning, but let's get get, get more into it. So. How much does coaching matter? Well, I think coaching is really critical on building your team and putting it together, uh, teaching the players, you know, fundamental skills, position techniques, you know, all those little fancy things you've got there. I think the key thing is knowing how to put players in the right positions, uh, your practice planning, you know, working on your weaknesses and your scouting plan versus you know, some of the weaker coaches are just, you know, they're just focused on the backs and don't even look at what they really should be working on. I mean, I think a lot of coaches need to, you know, balance their roster to their schemes, their offensive schemes. I've got running schemes here, but I mean, offensive schemes. They also need to, you know, play calling is a big deal. I'm not a great offensive play caller, pretty good uh, on defense. So, you know, can you, do that and you have experience do that that really comes into play and in game adjustments i'm better at scouting and i like to have coaches that also are very good at in game in game adjustments so i look for that in other coaches um so that's a big deal being able to adjust in game and more experienced coaches can do that now don't get me wrong i know how to do it but uh there are some gifted coaches that can see things that are really good. I can do that in scouting, but um, that's a really big deal. A lot of rookie coaches will forget special teams, and so great coaches will take advantage of that. Uh, and look, I'll just be honest. Some coaches are very gifted with teaching and working and, you know, players responding and motivating. So, you know, you've got that too. And so that's, uh, that's a big deal. Uh, the other thing is, is though, even though you're a great coach or above average coach, if you decide to like make some goofy decisions, uh, in game, or maybe you're changing up a whole lot. Cause you think, you know, you got to do this. You, you can lose some big games. So coaching does matter. I mean, I've played against a couple of really pretty good coaches, I would say are above average. And uh, they lost the Super Bowl because he changed his backfields, his core offense, and decided to kick field goals and really left a lot of points on the table, a lot of yards on the table. Uh, and we were quite surprised. One of my best wins ever. Uh, I think I really had my best coaching moment at that time. So, uh, you know, you got to be careful uh, with goofy decisions. So how much does talent take? You know, what does it matter? Uh, man, you know, at the end of the day, even in a rec league you know, or even a select travel ball, you've got to have talent to compete consistently if you want to get to the big games. You know, if you're just trying to have fun and be competitive and you don't care about your winning record, which I know a lot of parents here in Texas do, because if you're not winning, they're not happy. So we lean more on making sure we can win too, then you better have that talent. Uh, and really you gotta have the top talent to win Super Bowls. I mean, that's just the way it is. I think at any level, right? Uh, and yes, you can be competitive at lower levels, but if I can have great talent and recruit or, or draft better, I'm going to do that. I mean, I'm not just gonna say, oh, give me the team. Cause that's happened before. We got to the playoffs, but we were a 500 team and we were competitive. But the next year, we almost got into the Super Bowl and lost in the you know the last second uh, on our DN crashed. Or otherwise, we'd have been in that Super Bowl. That happened to us two seasons. So, you know, 
yeah, you can coach a, a team that's given to you, uh, or, you know, don't really worry about talent. But man, I know I, if I have the opportunity, want to draft an eval right and get get players. You know, the other thing that talent, if you've got players with constant inter- injuries, that's going to hurt your team. Like if you have too many timid players in youth football and you've got MPP rules, that becomes an issue because you're only as strong as your weakest link. Uh, if you've got a ton more weak players than strong players and you've got to get them in and your team is maybe over 25 players, that's going to be difficult to compete against the team that doesn't have that many players and doesn't have that many first year weak, timid players, whatever you want to call them there. So just understand that talent does matter. You may have the best two running backs in the league, but if you're, if your team consists mostly of rookie players and they're timid, that's kind of going to be a long season, even though you're a great coach. So some issues there. So what if your league has no drafting or recruiting and they just hand you teams? And I've been in a league that did that to me. I've taken over two teams when coaches weren't there and just helped the leagues out. So I've done that about four or five times. And man, you got to coach your Butakio. I will say that, and you better get hope you got lucky with some of your players uh, because, you know, that's really when coaching takes over. If you're unable to draft and pick your kids from like a league pool or you can't really go out and recruit your, recruit your own team. So you really got to overcoach. You've got to know your stuff. You got to choose your schemes to match your roster. You got to be able to put those players in the right positions. I say don't be some unicorn and go out and try something that's totally goofy that's not proven in youth football. You know, you know, don't be trying at five years old or six years old. Don't be trying to run the triple option, uh, even though you think you can. I mean, you know, sure, there's the 1.0% chance that you're good at that. But why take that risk? Do something that other people are doing kind of fit that in if you want at the end, but man, don't be the unicorn study your current league and what those teams and offensive schemes are doing and how those coaches in your league are doing. I mean, every time I've kind of gone into a new league, I've interviewed people and watched and kind of scouted to see, you know, what's working a couple of times. I didn't do that. I I did that in seven on seven and I got spanked for about three weeks until I kind of, got my stuff together and said, okay, this is really what's going on here. Uh, Cause I walked in thinking this is going to be simple. So right. As I say that set your expectations, realistically, if you're a first year coach shoot for a 500 season, if you're a first year coach within that league and that league's pretty tough, don't set your expectations too high, learn your league and age division. So if you're in a league, that's no drafting or recruiting, Man, coach your butt off, study the league, study youth football, know what you're doing, and overcoach. And that's when, you know, if you've if everybody's kind of got equal talent, then coaches that you know, coaching does matter at that point. So let's talk about talent. You know, what it what what really makes great talent? Man, speed. Uh, you know, that's critical, faster, quicker, size, bigger, stronger, age, older maturity, more muscles, maybe they're hitting puberty. Experience matters, ball carrier, receiving, blocking, tackling, center, QB, all those huge football IQ. If they've played a long time, or at least they have a high football IQ, you can install quickly and learn schemes. Is the play coachable? You know, are they going to go along? And are their parents not going to fight you every time you try to install something new? Uh, Has that team been together or are they rookie team? You know, all that kind of comes into talent. And lastly, and this is really where, you know, talent kind of takes over sometimes is uh, for many of you that played sports know that there's, you know, players where God or whoever, whatever you want to call it, has touched them and gifted them with some talent and some skill set. Those top tier one players, especially in their ball carriers, running backs, receivers, quarterbacks, and youth football, and you may have one or two of those on your team, talent takes over. Because uh, at younger ages, especially I'd say below 10U, 
two players with really high speed are going to sweep on you all day long. And uh, that will be tough. That's my opinion. So let's talk about coaching. Uh, coaching here, uh, you know, does your does HC, OCDC, assistant, assistant coach have experience? You know, are they football knowledgeable? Do they have experience of a, of a player? Uh, you know, do they understand and, and have experience with youth football and have that experience? How long have they been within the league? Do they know how to eval talent, set up positions, recruiting, drafting, all that upfront effort? Are they a good communicator and a good motivator? You know, that's what goes into being a good coach. And then a little bit of luck that you might get be gifted and know how to talk and teach players. So, you know, those are kind of what you're looking at. And that's kind of a big deal. Both of those things can kind of equal out, but we'll talk about kind of a matrix here in a minute. Uh, recruiting and evaluating drafted players. I, I don't agree with Caesar when he says, you know, you don't really need to spend a lot of time to do that. I don't think you need to spend, you know, an inordinate amount of time, but I definitely need to focus on it. Even the best programs in college and the NFL, they want to draft the top talent. So I personally love the evaling and drafting part of our youth football season. I don't like recruiting like select travel teams because I'm not a gift of gab kind of salesy guy. I'm more of an introvert. So our current league doesn't require us to recruit because they recruit and have a big pool. And then we get to, we do a, like a, a grass drills, punt pass and kick day kind of thing where we see them do things and then we evaluate them and then put them in a draft and we get to choose from there. I'm really good at that. I like that. I've learned how to do that. It, you know, all this pays off in building your team and pays off in the long run and real worth your effort. And my little deal here is I, I give the I used to give the coaches clinics and develop that for our current youth football league. And so I had in there basically how I was going about evaluating and drafting players at our grass drills. Uh, and that's really hurt our team because now a lot of folks know how to do that when they didn't. I did it because I wanted the, you know everybody to kind of get more equal teams and really make us all coach. But I probably should have thought about that <laughs> more uh, because now everybody is kind of using uh, this draft eval sheet that I kind of taught out there. So. So yeah, it's a big piece because I know it from that, that other peoples have learned it. And now, you know, it's kind of costing us a few games every season because before we were really good. I was really good at it and we taught other people to do it. So highly recommend it. It works. It makes a big deal. Dave Caesar, I think you might be a little wrong about that one because talent, good talent on your team does pay off. Some examples of how top talented teams have kind of dealt with us or we've dealt with them uh, a couple of years ago our league had some outside leagues come in and they were just beating everybody uh, they were kind of hand-picked didn't have to go through our process uh, and so we sh we probably should have been better out that we we were not letting them do that anymore because we had several issues of that you can see the two first two points here we had the last time and what really killed it is a team came in and they were beating everybody by 30 points and uh i think it was like 36 points and uh at that point we you know everybody's like okay we we can't have outside teams come into our league that are not running our draft process and how we put teams together because you can game the system if you're outside and that's what this team did and it was kind of it was brutal but we uh, got through it as a league uh, I just laughed the first game it happened. They had no weak players in any of their positions, uh, which was quite hilarious. Um, we have beat a stacked undefeated team that took us out in the regular season because in the Super Bowl, he thought he overthought the game and changed so much up and we beat him. Um, here recently, last year, I helped the sixth grade team that had this crazy top tier God gifted running back who 
That team went undefeated, uh, but they got beat in the Super Bowl. We installed some B stuff. They managed the clock and they beat this guy because they focused on making sure they tackle that top tier running back and they got him. Uh, I think 21 to six or something. So you can do that. And they were good coaches versus a top tier that had kind of mediocre coaches. Uh, see this other one, there was a top tier running back. Oh yeah. So we were in an age division where this team had a top tier running back and three or four other really good running backs. And they were wiping everybody out in the fall. But uh, when they lose him, the main back for spring ball, because we have fo spring football in Texas uh, at this league, uh, they lose pretty handily. So, you know, that's what's going on there is, you know, they, they that average group of coaches really relying too much on that one tailback uh, to win games. Um, we've got lucky. We had a stacked team uh, and got through a season. You know, I think we were beating everybody by 20 points. We had an undefeated run and then got into the Super Bowl against another great coach that had coached also select travel ball. And he almost got us. We really didn't change too much up. I thought it was going to be easy. And uh, we probably should have prepared a little bit more, but uh, he also had a tier one running back. So we were fairly evenly matched there. Uh, first year in the league or second year in the league here, the current lead, I had a five and three eight U team where we had some top talent, but not as good as a top tier team that had been winning in the age division for the last two seasons. Uh, we beat him because he made a stupid blitz call and a stupid offensive call in the last fourth quarter, which cost him the game. So you, you know, he kind of got overcoached at that point, but he was also a great coach. He's a friend of mine. So, you know, it just comes down to some luck sometimes really, you know, right. Uh, and then uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, we had an average team against a team that uh, we had played for many, many seasons and they had their, they had had their core team together and they had good coaches, really good coaches too, but they beat us because they had this esprit de core teamwork thing going on where that they just clicked as a team. We lost on the last third or fourth play on a short punt that a rookie cornerback touched. And, you know, we had gone over it, but that talent he was a rookie kind of cost us that game because he didn't know to get out of the way of that ball. So there's some examples there with that. So let's, uh, so here's this answer here. I've kind of got a matrix and it's kind of confusing a little bit, but hopefully it's not. So, uh, coaches that are equal in skill level, say they're both great coaches, talent's going to win the game. Great coaching is definitely going to beat poor coaching that has pretty good talent to great talent. Stud stack teams uh, with serviceable coaching, you know, kind of above average. They're probably going to beat good and great coaches uh, with less than stellar talent because those studs are going to take over. Uh, great coaches with okay talent probably are going to beat average coaches with good talent. So it's really coming down to, you know, who's got talent and who can coach. So key for you here really is guys become a good coach to a great coach. That's really the key. And then you can probably be competitive with anybody except those few that have those two or three God gifted tier one running backs that are just running through the league. But you can probably get to the Super Bowl or championship playoff game uh, by just being a great coach. Try to be competitive. And also, I'd rather be lucky. So, you know, there's always that. I've been lucky against some great coaches where they've made some bonehead mistakes, and I'm sure they've said the same thing about me. But uh, try to be the best you can if that's uh, at all practical. Uh, the reason I kind of went over this is I've had, had a couple of emails lately about folks running some of my schemes and they're getting beat by larger and stronger teams. Uh, and they, you know, they have a timid team that's kind of rookie that just got put together. Uh, 
really as a coach, you, you kind of need to understand where your talent level is on the team and set your expectations for the season compared to what you see in the league. I mean, it's really easy for me when those two other teams came in and even some teams that get lucky in the draft in our league, um, you can see pretty quickly that they've got a lot more talent and speed and experience than you do. And, you know, you're going to do everything you can to beat them, but, uh, probability you need to set your expectation is where you're going to make it into the playoffs and hopefully you don't match up to them on that that game to get get further through so really try to start setting your expectations you want to be the best coach that you can and give everybody that 110 percent you know you want to study and research and and really don't blame your team talent because i know in junior high we were the we were a new school we just got put together we were going against some old 40 year old middle schools that have been together and bigger neighborhoods. And we were getting rocked a lot of games and the coaches kind of took that out on us. And I had played on an undefeated team for many years in Pee Wee that was travel select. And I didn't understand that because I could see for myself, we did not have core running back group or quarterback that could do a lot of this stuff that they think we could do. So I think as a coach, you, you kind of have to recognize the league you're in and what the scope of that competition is going to be compared to where you're at. And there's no reason to beat up your talent uh, if they just can't compete. I mean, you want to be a better coach, coach them up, but no reason to take it out on them. Uh, and do that because you know, smaller rookie teams against teams that have been together for a while are probably going to get beat up in a scrimmage until, because I've noticed that it takes three to four games for a rookie really to get their feet wet. And I think even in the NFL, they talk about it. It takes you some games before you kind of get into it. So that's that. I mean, the other thing for his co for a coach, uh, you've got to know, you know, on this is what's best for your offense and defense team. Uh, you, you know, a lot of defense or offense you run scheme wise. If your talent pool isn't there just by changing that up, it's really not going to solve the problem of lack of talent and poor coaching. So you really need to put that in terms where, you know, a lot of people, if you can't run like, I know this is, uh, I'm biased here. If you can't run a beast tight tank off tackle power play or a single wing off tackle power play or a power eye off tackle play and get three yards consistently, changing a scheme to something else and doing a lot of misdirection or trying something fancy isn't probably going to solve your problem. If you can't run some of the most simple plays in football, then, you know, at really young ages, you probably aren't going to make a successful change by just changing schemes. That's, that's my take on that. So that's some of the reason why I wanted to talk about talent versus coaching, because you still got to have talent. I mean, uh, you still want to be the best coach, but you, you got to have talent. And that's my answer. Talent is king. There's nothing wrong with spending time on recruiting, evaluating, putting people in the right positions and filling your team up with great players. It makes life so much easier if you're good at that, you know how to do it and you get it right. Uh, but you also just can't be somebody that shows up and coach. You know, you, you can't be a YMCA flag coach and just come in and, you know, there's one, there's like, you can practice an hour before the game and just have your game. That's not in most football league, tackle football leagues, that can't work that way. You've got to prepare. You, you got to understand how to win big games uh, consistently uh, because you've got to become a good coach to be able to do that. You've got to spend time scouting, evaluating, develop. You got to develop players too. And you can recruit players, but a core amount of your team are players you have to develop so you've got to do that know how to do that 
and blocking and tackling is key and blocking teaching players how to block because I'll be honest so many bad coaches do not spend time uh, coaching players how to block I just talked to a team the other day that had all this top tier talent and I was asking them what their blocking calls were and what they were doing and they're like oh we didn't we just we just tell them to block the guy in front of them and I'm like man <laughs> you guys have been lucky having that top tier talent so uh you need to work with your weakest players and coach them up put them in uh you know kind of uh kindergarten pods if they're not getting it with the experienced players and get them up to speed give them some game time if you get a chance because you're only as good as your weakest link but even though talent is king and i believe that because i look back at when i won big games over the long haul it's because we've had some good players and it's we you know, we've been very competitive we've had great players when we have not been very competitive uh and not gotten into the higher ranks of the playoffs we didn't really have a backfield that was very well ranked as far as you know where i would see them in the depth chart so you still got to have that talent but you've got as a coach Give your players 110%. I've had so many videos on this. You, you, you've you, got to go the extra mile for your players like you asked them. You've got to learn. You've got to study. You've got to research. You've got to have commitment. You've got to put in the time. You And you've got to become a good youth football coach. And when you don't have that top-tier tailback, you tried to recruit or you got a team that was just handed to you, you can still be very competitive within a league and beat those other coaches that are not putting in that coaching effort that may have equal talent as you. And those are the games you want to win and you must win because those top tier games, you just need a little luck. You just need a little bit of coaching skill and you may get lucky or a little special teams mistake and you may get into that playoff game and get there. So talent is king because I always want the best talent. It makes my life so much easier, but I am not going to give up on becoming the best coach I can. And that's what you should do. So that's my take. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you get a chance, please head over to coach Parker and look at my uh, playbook ebook section. I've got a ton of stuff out there uh, on all the top U football formations, the beast, the six, two defense and all that good stuff drills. You got that. Uh, please like subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff that really helps me out with Google. Uh, yeah. Take a look at that. Uh, and please, if you get a chance, I know it's, it's just leave me a comment uh, down there. If you get a chance, that really helps out a ton. Uh, just say, Hey, I like the video or, you know, this is what I would do, whatever. But uh, if you get that opportunity, please do it. Uh, again, this is uh, coach Parker with coachparker.org and coaching you football tips and talk podcast, and all that good stuff. Glad you could join me today. Remember to play for fun and winning is funner. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you have it a good week. Ciao.